If you're watching this channel, then you might be wondering how to get started as a dungeon master. What are the absolute basic beginning steps? Well, first, gather your friends. We did a video about that. And then, now this part might seem radical to some of you, talk to them. Find out what kind of stories they like. If I had asked my players if they enjoy stories where someone finds out they're the descendant of a long lost king, and then I'd found out that, no, they don't actually. My first campaign would have gone a whole lot better. Once you've done that, once you have your group and you know what they like, go find or write an adventure. There's a lot of advice out there on this subject that's really good, but here's my starting advice. One, start small. I personally recommend that you start with a one-shot. A one-shot is a game that's meant to be run in one day, so there's no expectation that it would become an ongoing campaign. Make sure you're clear to everyone that this is a one-shot. I had a friend who ran her first D&D game as a one-shot, and it went great. It was a ton of fun. Everyone enjoyed it. But one player didn't realize that it was going to only be a one-shot and not be an ongoing campaign. And they were really bummed at the end when they realized this was the end of the story and there wasn't a plan for this character that that player had spent an awful lot of time building. Now, it's one thing if your group decides to keep playing together after that one shot. That can happen. It can happen often if you're not careful. It's happened to me like five times, and it can really mess with your plans when all of a sudden you have a new campaign brewing with players you were not planning to run a campaign with. Five times. But that can also be really wonderful when it happens. But your goal when you're just starting out should be to run something that is contained. That way there is no pressure on anybody. They don't have to feel like they're committing to a few weeks or months or years of playing with these characters. It also opens them up to be a little bit more honest in their feedback. After a one shot, if you ask them how it went, if they have any advice, they're more likely to give it to you because they know that the next game you run is going to improve on that. If you're just starting a campaign, they don't necessarily know what's completed, what's been fulfilled, maybe you're setting up story arcs for later. When it's a one shot, None of that's true, so they can give you more honest feedback that you can use to grow and improve. However, I should point out that the people who currently write D&D adventures don't agree with me about this. And they want you to start with a slightly longer adventure. And you know what? They're kind of right. Because the adventure they put into their starter set, The Lost Minds of Fandelver, is really good. If you want to start running D&D, this can be a fabulous way to do it. Which leads me to my next piece of advice. Step two, work smarter, not harder. DMing is a creative endeavor. And just like any other creative endeavor, you can trick yourself into thinking you're doing necessary prep for a long time without actually getting anything of substance done. So many DMs spend way too much time building their adventure or building the world. I have a friend who has a campaign he wants to run and he's been writing it for three or four years. And personally, I don't think that's necessary, especially when you're just starting out. It's actually a great option to just buy the starter set and run this adventure right out of the box. You can run it over a month or two, and it can segue nicely into some of the larger adventures that have been published if that interests you. Now, this is the adventure that kicks off the first story arc of the Adventure Zone podcast. So if your players have listened to that, then they'll know some of the early story beats, and you may wanna pick something else instead, like maybe the Essentials Kit. The Essentials Kit also has its own adventure, Dragon of Ice Spire Peak, which is pretty solid as well, but either one is a great option. The starter set has pre-generated characters included in the box, so if your players are willing, they can just pick one of those characters instead of making their own. This works especially well for Lost Minds of Fandelver, because the character sheets are built with backstory elements that directly tie the characters into this adventure. But those sheets should just be a jumping off point. If your players want to edit those character sheets or make brand new ones, you should empower them to do so. After all, this is their story. Hey, that feels like a pretty important piece of advice, so I think I'm gonna say it again. Number three, this is your player's story. So much of online D&D discourse features DMs complaining about how the players are reacting to their stories. And while I totally sympathize, I think we should be really careful with our wording. What we create is not a story, because a story happens when characters take actions. And if we create something that is too rigid, where we have certain expectations of what the characters should do or what the characters must do, we're pretty likely to run into some problems because that's my next piece of advice and something that everybody needs to hear when they're starting out. Number four, the players will always surprise you. This is, I think, why so many DMs take to Twitter or Reddit when the story of their campaign doesn't go the way they expected. Even if you are an exceptional DM, you probably cannot anticipate the actions 
of three other people, or four other people, or five or six other people. They're going to come up with ideas that will totally shock you. But this is actually a feature, not a bug. This is the power of a tabletop RPG like D&D. In a video game, or a book, or a movie, the only things that can happen are the things the creators took the time to consider. Even open world video games specifically have certain items that can or cannot be destroyed, based on the behavior they did or did not anticipate from their players. But anything can happen in D&D. And your role is not to set up bumpers so they can stay in their lane. In my opinion, your role is to follow their lead and help give them the experience that they are seeking. So if you're running this adventure, and the players decide to team up with the goblins and help them unionize against the hobgoblins, well then, maybe that should be possible. But. That doesn't mean you let them do whatever they want. And that's why my next piece of advice is key. Step five, when in doubt, have the players roll some dice. I'm working on another video about when you should or should not call for a roll. You'll see that at some point in the future. But when you're just starting out as a DM, calling for a roll is one of the most powerful tools in your toolbox. The dice can help you reconcile a situation without showing favoritism or being too harsh. After all, it's not on you, the dungeon master, whether the player succeeded or failed, it was up to the dice. It's more complicated than that, but when you're just starting out, this is enough to get the ball rolling. Step six, I think? Play fair. I include this as part of my sign off in every episode on this channel. And some viewers, I'm sure, disagree, at least based on the phrase, play fair. They might feel that sometimes a DM has to fudge dice rolls or give the monster extra hit dice in order to give the players the experience that they're here for. And I agree. When I say play fair, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about giving the players a fair chance. Sometimes that means you have to fudge your dice rolls so the characters don't all die. We'll talk about fudging dice another day. Let's not get into it now. I'm talking about making sure that all the players have a chance to do cool stuff. You shouldn't let one player dominate every session. Sure, focusing on someone for a session or two might be necessary, especially if you run the kind of campaign that dives into individual characters' backstories. But that doesn't mean that everyone else just has to sit off to the side while you handle it with that one player for several sessions in a row. You never want any of your players to feel like a passenger. They should all have the opportunity to do cool stuff. Additionally, some players always feel like the DM has a distinct advantage over them. And technically, yeah, they're right, you do. The players are bound by the rules on their character sheet, although Maybe not as much as they think. We'll get to that in a minute. But you, you can do whatever you want and nobody could stop you. A player cannot just decide they have a spell or decide a magic item works a certain way, but you can. You can change the rules of a monster in the middle of a battle. You can make up monsters. That's part of our job. That is the power of the DM. So when I say play fair, it's also an invitation to see yourself the way the players see you. Do they see someone who makes up rules to favor themselves or to favor one particular player in the party? And if so, I invite you to think about what you can do to remind the players that you are not trying to beat them. Sometimes that's just as easy as saying, I'm not trying to kill you. I am a fan of your characters. And the reason this situation is so hard, so challenging, is because I can't wait to see what you're going to do to get yourselves out of it. Because and this is kind of a spoiler for every video I'm going to make on this channel, but communicating with your players goes a long way. And the final, the most pivotal piece of advice is this. Step seven, have fun. It's seriously the most important rule in the hobby. And for different players, it can mean different things. We'll do another video about the difference between kinds of players and how you can engage with each of them at your table and make sure they're having fun. This is also where we get terms like rule of cool, where in the moment in the middle of your session, you decide it doesn't matter what the rules will allow or not. The players wanna do something and you think it sounds awesome. We'll dig into that another time too, because there are some tricks to employing rule of cool without making your players feel like they're getting something for free. But for now, just relax and try to have a good time. And here's the thing, DMing can inherently be stressful because it's a creative experience. All creativity can sometimes be stressful. You're putting yourself out there for your friends in a very vulnerable way, and it feels like you're opening yourself up to criticism. But remember, these are your friends. You should feel comfortable talking to them about the experience. Don't be afraid to ask them if they're having a good time. It might feel awkward, but it's better that you know how they're actually feeling, rather than risking the chance that someone feels like they can't say something. They're your friends, and they all agreed to play the game with you. Try to relax, and have fun with them. And that's it. 
Just some advice for new dungeon masters that you can take with you to your first game. And if you've been dungeon mastering for a long time, but any of this advice you thought was new or helpful, I'm glad for that as well. If this video was helpful to you, please hit the like button. If you want to see more like it, subscribe and make sure to hit the bell. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, play fair and have fun.